Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Luxury Live show. With me here is my co-host, Fashionably Amy. And today, we have a special guest all the way from UK. So last week, UK. This week, UK again, which is why we had the special timing. I know it's a little like um, different, but um, don't worry. We will, uh, we will go back to the next, I mean, the usual timing starting next week. So Stella, um, from who is the co-founder of Mavery, who's also a luxury YouTuber and a luxury influencer in, um, uh, sorry, my phone, <laughs> on, uh, in UK. So anyway, we will bring her in shortly. Uh, but before we do that, let's have a bit of like administration, right? So um, I think she will be our last guest until the end of the year, right? So there'll be a few more luxury live shows. I didn't put up the calendar, but you can definitely check out our calendar on the community post. Myself and Amy, we posted the calendar all the way until the end of December. So we have a couple of weeks off at the end of December. And yeah, so today's our last guest. And then next year onwards, we've got more guests coming in. I think we've already booked one for January. Yes, we already booked one. Also Canadian, you guys. Mm. Um, more Chanel Hermes, Hermes especially. It'll be fun. <laughs> that will be really fun. Yeah. So yeah, just, just check out our calendar because last week was the first week that we changed timings. So we also yes. spoke about the daylight savings that's happening in the US, the UK, everywhere except Singapore and Asia. Yeah. We don't have daylight savings. So on Saturdays, the usual luxury live show, we will start at 12 p.m. for Singapore and surrounding countries here. But it'll be the same time for folks in the US and the UK as... No, not the UK. Same time for the US and the Canadian folks. And then on Sunday, which is the extra luxury live show it will maintain at the 1 30 which is tomorrow and but it will be earlier for the canadian folks yeah. so tomorrow we have a real <laughs> oh my gosh if any of you are members tomorrow is going to be a big one a little little kind of like um maybe a uh sneak <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be yeah like a selling sort of like a vlog selling Mm, video well, also like showing uh showing showing some eye candy and chit chatting um you know because our members are like are like the closest knit like almost like family so yeah tomorrow same time for you guys in singapore hong kong but it will be uh i think for the first time it will be 9 30 p.m instead of the usual 10 30 p.m uh yeah. in pacific time so if you're in the LA area, Vancouver, it's 9.30, not 10.30. Um, yeah. Yeah. So tomorrow will be fun. They like lots savings. of eye candy. <laughs> lots of it. Actually, I'm looking down at my like table there. Everything is laid out for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> in the boxes, in the little packaging. So that's going to be like, yeah, tomorrow's going to be fun for the members. So yeah, that's, that, that's all for just the administration. So we're going to start with um, just chatting with Stella first, you know, uh, and then we're going to talk about the Hermes sale because she actually got invited. So I'm going to bring her in and just give me a second. Hello. Hi, Hi guys. Hello. <laughs> if you can see or hear anything in the background, it's um, really random. I've got furniture being delivered at 7 a.m. <laughs> but they've managed to come literally just now. So I had to go and wake Adam up and be like, can you come downstairs? <laughs> That's fine. Don't worry. I'm always running out here and there on a Saturday anyway, getting parcels and all that. You're so. always getting parcels. It's true. I'm always getting always. parcels. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stella, for joining us. It's so Thank nice to see you here. Me. Yes, yes. So um, I just introduced you as our, you know, luxury YouTuber. You haven't done any YouTube videos for a while, huh? But you've been, <laughs> you are a little bit, but you're definitely on Instagram and a co-founder of Mavery Jewelry, beautiful jewelry. So Thanks. we're going to have a chat with you, right? And then we're going to talk about the Hermes sale, which you're going to story time us <laughs> that you got yeah. invited to. Yeah. Awesome. So Stella, um, 
some people may or may not know, but um, so Mavery is a company that you founded. In fact, if you guys remember when we had our uh, anniversary show back in June or July, I think it was July. July, yeah. July, I think we had our uh, two anniversary shows and uh, Stella, so her company was one of the very generous um, sponsors of the, mm -hmm. of the giveaway. So thank you so much, Stella. Hi, um, Maybe start off telling us uh, a little bit more about your company, Mayfrey. Okay, so Mayfrey was founded literally in the depths of our first lockdown in the UK. Um, and it was a friend of mine that came to me because she knows I love fashion and jewellery and clothing and handbags and everything else. Um, and she came to me with the idea and we literally started it via Zoom because at that point you couldn't meet with anyone, you couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So I think we started talking and working together. I think it was like May, April, May of last year. So we started all the background work and um, it actually launched Black Friday last year. So we're coming up to our first year. Wow. Yeah, so um, a lot of the designs, not everything, but a lot of the designs are designed by us. Um, and it's just something that we have a passion for and we really enjoy. That's amazing. so amazing. Oh, my goodness. So I guess, um, like, I guess what, what made you decide to start a jewelry business as opposed to anything else, actually? So I've always loved jewellery, always. Even growing up before handbags, I would always ask for jewellery for birthdays or if there was anything significant, anything happening, I'd ask for jewellery. And I think the main purpose of that, and that's kind of moved over into handbags, is that with every piece of jewellery that I own, I know if someone bought it for me, I can remember the feeling I had when I received it. I can remember if I bought it for myself for an achievement or something like that. So I think it has a lot of sentimental value to me. And I've always just really loved jewelry and it can change the way you feel. When you put some jewelry on, you add you add some accessories on, into your outfit, it really switches it up and changes it up. Mm -hmm. Right, I think I answered my next question. <laughs> so if you have <laughs> In bags, luxury bags or jewelry. Definitely Which jewelry, right? <laughs> Which one are you gonna go for? Oh, maybe you've changed. Maybe now it's handbags. <laughs> but you I have don't to know like if I could give up. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I don't know if I could just be like, I'm never gonna have handbag a handbag again ever again. Right. I don't know. I think there would have to be a compromise. I'm not sure I could actually decide between the two. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. So you, so you, have, to, you have to pick. You have to pick one. We're we're forcing you to pick one. <laughs> no, not fair. Not doing it. <laughs> well, since the since our channels are uh, and even yours is mainly about bags. Of course, it's luxury fashion in general, but a lot of bag reviews. If um, if I had to ask you how long you've been collecting luxury bags and uh, how has your style for bags changed over the years? So my first handbag, I remember when I turned 16, my mum's uncle, so my great uncle, would that be right? He gave me a check and I think back then it was for £200 or something like that. And I knew exactly what I wanted to get. I remember my mum got me jewellery <laughs> for my 16th. <laughs> and I went to Louis Vuitton Bond Street and I got the, remember the little pouch? What are they called? Um, the pochette. Pouchette accessoire. Yeah, that one, exactly. Um, so that was when I was 16 and I'm now 37. Is that 20 something years, 21? I don't Ooh. know, how long is that? So a long time. Um, That's good. Yeah. And I would say that my style has definitely changed. I think in the beginning, because obviously I was 16, I got my first bag. I didn't buy another bag for many, many years. It wasn't like I was like now where I'm always thinking of the next bag. I'm sure I was thinking of the next bag, but I couldn't <laughs> afford the next bag. So it's very different to now. But I think I was really influenced 
years ago by what everyone else around me was buying. So that would influence in what I wanted to buy. So I don't think I actually found what I really liked until later on. And I think that's what's changed because I now know what I like. I see the trends. I can jump on board if I want, but I really try to stick true to what I really like and not what everyone else is trying to tell me I should like, if that makes sense. Mm. So what do you like? What, so what's the difference? Like what, what was like, what's the main difference? Like so I, 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 I can say mine, what, but what are yours? So I think obviously trends do play a part of it because I mean, my, my first Chanel was the GST, you know, the big boxy square bag. And that was completely down to me. Like I loved that bag. I wanted on my 30th to get a Chanel bag that I could wear every single day. I wish I'd bought the flat then, but um, <laughs> I wanted a bag yeah. <laughs> that I could wear every single day um, to work. And that was perfect for me. Whereas if I was gonna buy a bag now, my first bag from Chanel, it wouldn't be that. And I suppose as you go through stages of life and things change, what you choose changes. But I think I really did, I mean, when I first started buying, it was Louis Vuitton, everything was Louis Vuitton. And I needed the bag, I needed the accessory. I needed multiple accessories. So I would spend so much money because I would see everyone on YouTube probably because I've been watching YouTube for years and years and years. And I would see girls on YouTube unboxing the card holder and the key holder, mm -hmm. and the big wallet and the smaller wallet. And the you need a pouch to carry your earbuds and you need a pouch to carry <laughs> your them. And it was, it was bag, pouch, 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 pouch. And yeah. uh, I don't do that anymore. I literally have like, one thing and that's it so I don't worry too much about what's inside the bag I think that actually is the biggest thing that I've changed mm. the accessory that's interesting I think for me the biggest change that is monogram like I still love monogram but I used to be so crazy over monogram like if I see an LV monogram like all over it but now I'm sort of a bit like mm, I like I prefer a little yeah, it's sort of like, I still like it, but it's kind of like really, really tapered down. Yeah, it's a bit more understated now, I think, like what people kind of go for. I was like that as well, monogram, everything. Like if someone said something about Damier B, I'd be like, no, monogram, like. <laughs> Where is the, the monogram? <laughs> yeah. That's funny because I, uh, when I started buying LV, I did not buy any monogram. I did not buy any monogram until, wow, quite a few years later because my first bag was the, in AP leather. My second bag was in Damier Ben. And uh, that was like in 2008 or nine, eight, eight. And then the next bag, which was monogram, was like in 2013. So wow. yeah, that's it's interesting because I did not I I was sort of the person that did not gravitate towards monogram because I thought it was too flashy, and then I became in love with monogram. And then now I think the biggest change is that um, it's not so much about how I choose bags, but it's more about buying accessories around it. So the shoes the scarves uh, all the other things not the car not the slgs I, I was never really into slgs that much but it's just buying a bit of everything like you know headbands hats all kinds of things <laughs> and bags Actually, that's <laughs> true i never thought i would buy shoes as well but mm. yeah I, I i think so but now I've it's like bought louis vuitton shoes ever i nearly did i nearly bought those brogue type monogram funnily enough shoes I think during lockdown, I went mad in lockdown. I started buying way too much. I don't, I wasn't going so much, but um, yeah, I nearly bought those, but I don't think I've ever had any Louis Vuitton shoes. Stella, can you show us, uh, you told us about your oldest bag. Can you show us your oldest and newest bags? So, newest bag or bags? <laughs> the oldest would be the pochette accessory, mm, yes. which I have 
no idea where it is so I can't actually show you that okay. <laughs> uh, my second oldest which I think I got in 2008 if I'm not wrong is the ah, Neverfall. Oh, oh, is that a GM? It's that huge. A... It's a GM. <laughs> yes. So I now use this for the beach. I take this to the beach because I really don't care if anything happens to it because it's it's dying, bless it. <laughs> Literally. I mean, you can see the patina. It's um, it's very, very old. Very old. <laughs> Um, and my newest, now I don't know, it's between two and I can't remember, because I've been very good this year. Last year was a car crash, so I decided that this year I had to be good, which I think I have been quite good. Um, and I'm not sure, it's between... <gasps> oh, this one, this wow. one, Which I love this bag, I have to say. I, I bought it... Because, I bought it without even seeing it. I, my sales associate in Harrods um, messaged me to say he's got it. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I want that. <laughs> um, and it's the first ever creamy, uh, not Louis Vuitton, <laughs> Chanel bag that um, I've ever gotten. They did the top handle on the mini, yeah. Yeah. So I did have a mini that I sold last year um because i the color more than anything and then i knew i wouldn't wanted a mini back and this was the one so it's between this one and this one and i can't remember which one so ah. which i know isn't as trendy as chanel but i have to say i have worn this bag non-stop it's such a good bag so if anyone's thinking about it or if anyone wants a bag that they don't have to baby they don't have to worry about you can literally just throw it on it fits a ton then have a look at this this is a good one actually i didn't even know they still make this because this is like what uh five six years ago more than that this is I a clothing yeah i i've no idea what it's called Hmm. Groove? Have I made I that up? Too. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> Let me try. I've no idea. But this um, this is one of their classics, I'm pretty sure. So they always bring this back in different colours. And this was a... I mean, my camera's awful. It's still dark outside. But this was a um, colour they brought out for... Beginning of the year, middle of the year. Call a Marcy. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. The Drew yeah. is the one with the weird, um, the lock. You know, the one that every it's beautiful, but it's just got that fiddly lock that goes this way. I see. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I love that you choose. Well, you're you're totally not like us because that's why I don't even know that bag because I I wouldn't <laughs> buy I wouldn't have bought that one. <laughs> I love that you choose exactly what you love. It doesn't matter that it's not a Chanel or an Hermes. Um, what are your favorite luxury pieces today, as of today? So tell us about your favorite bag, your favorite jewelry, okay. other accessories. So this has to be one of my favorites. And this was the bag that I got during lockdown. The shops weren't even open yet. And I, I don't know what happened. I think I was just going a bit crazy during lockdown. And it's the. Um, oh, oh, I love this bag too. Oh my gosh, this color is yeah, pretty. It's is that a blue? So it's the lighting. It is. It's a gray with an undertone of the blue. Gray. It's okay. coming up as a bit too blue. I don't know how to oh, get I it. Think it now it looks color. more gray. Yeah. But um, yeah, this has to be one of my favorites. Yeah. And I bought it, and I think I used it twice the second time or the first time i wore it i nearly got mugged which wasn't oh. fun yeah someone i don't know if you call it a mugging or i don't know but i um put my bag down next to me and two a lady came up asking for money we were at a coffee shop a lady came up asking for money so everyone looked at her and i could just feel my bag was this side and i could just feel that someone was there and I looked over and there was another woman literally about to grab my handbag. 
So I got a bit of um, a fear with this. So I didn't wear it again for ages and I've started wearing it now and I love it. And this is literally one of my favorites. And I'm not gonna worry about the leather. I've said to myself, I'm not gonna worry about the leather. I'm just gonna enjoy my things. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's the way to go. But you know, putting the bags out at the side, you never do that if you ever visit Malaysia. You put the bag on your on lap. Your lap. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so now if I do, I'll have the crossbody and I'll do it like oh, this. Yeah, yeah that's okay. I'll do fine. that, yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely one of my favorites. Another favorite is, because I use this all the time, so I think I have to include it, is my um, agenda. Oh. So I know not many people use <laughs> pen and paper anymore, <laughs> but um, I use my agenda literally every single day. So this is one of my favorites. And I got this this year, and it's the one without the, um, what's it, the, um, the oh, the, oh, the closure. Yeah, I think this is the biggest version that they have. I could be wrong with that. So that's another favorite of mine, um, purely because I use it every day and I love it. I, I never even knew that they had one without the closure, the snap button closure, right? Yeah, yeah. So I have the smaller size, one smaller to this with the closure yeah. in the era bean. And um, the button goes all funny. I've had it for years. So I thought I'd try this one because there's nothing on it that can yeah. that can go rusty, basically. So um, I like this better. Mm, this is nice. Yeah. It's, it's quite big, so you can see it's bigger than yeah. my head. <laughs> so it's one to leave at home. It's not one to carry around with you, but I do really enjoy using that. Um, I had to mention these shoes purely because of the comfort level. So I can't wear, I always find the designer shoes are so uncomfortable, regardless if they're high heeled or flats. And when I put these on my feet, I was like, oh, my God, these are a dream. So they are the um, Dior. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're called. The Dior Converse looking shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got no idea what they're called. But I've got these in this black and I've got them in like a uh, beigey color. Mm, like the pink. Like, is it the pinky color? Yeah, like a pinky, pinky beigey colour. And I, I wear them obviously more in some spring, summer. But um, these are really, really, really comfortable. I've never had a problem with them. I've worn them for hours on end. And I think my jewellery, I've got to say, obviously my own brand as well. But um, luxury jewellery, I would say, do I have, can I just put everything in there? or does Everything, have yeah. Everything. Everything. I love everything. <laughs> <laughs> you love everything. <laughs> what was your favorite favorite piece? <laughs> all, pick one. Probably the love bracelet. Mm, yeah. Mm. Probably that I one. I love my love bracelet too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you I have the regular have. version or do you have the thin version? I've got the regular. Mm. So I've got the regular for the love and then the thin for the JUC. Yeah. Yeah. How is the thin for the JUC? You know, I think one of the concerns, like Amy, you were looking for it, but one of the concerns is the the mechanism, right? The the opening. Yeah. How is that yeah. for don't, you? Don't really don't worry about it. It literally, I've never had a problem. I've never when I first went to the um store and they bend it, don't they, to put it on, and you're like, oh my god, because you think it's <laughs> a snap. But it's really not going to. I've I've not had any issues, any. But it doesn't whatsoever. snag on your clothes when you put your arm through or any. No, nothing. So as long as that that this arrow bit, yeah, as long as it's facing you, then it's okay. If it makes any sense? Then it's okay. It doesn't oh. snag on anything. It's interesting because didn't Kat, didn't you say that your essays told you that it should be facing out? Yeah. But it has more to do with like, I don't know, to, to like block like, demons or something. Yeah. I don't like, know. You're supposed to wear your the air, the nail, the sharp bit outside because it's, so it's supposed to face outwards. 
because it's supposed to pre- like like you, you, like a like a sword, you know, protection. So the sharp bit faces out, so it protects you from evil. <laughs> no, but if you don't want it to snag on your clothes, and it works as well, <laughs> then have it facing in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. I've never had a problem with honestly. No, no, no. Yours you is facing out as well, isn't it? Facing out yeah. as well. Yours is facing out as well. Well, it depends which way you have your hand. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. So let's. <laughs> Yeah, how do you have? Is it your hand is like down? That. So the, the nail, the the sharp bit, that's facing is, in towards you. Oh, you mean this way? Okay, no. What I meant is, uh, what I meant is the the whole sharp part is towards the fingers. Yes, that's what mine is. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're supposed to wear it like that, this is what the Hermes people. I mean, no, the Cartier people told me is that um, you wear it this way because it's supposed to picte. Picte is what a uh, can yeah, Picture. it's like it's okay. it's like uh prevent from prevent the, uh, like the bad stuff from happening. Like the te is can it be yeah, kind like of like ghost, ghost things too? Like you know, just sort of things that you can't really explain or bad luck. <laughs> okay. Like to block those things out. Um I didn't know my bracelet was so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so how come so like Kat, how come you're saying that it should be facing out but then you guys are just wearing it the same way yeah no what she meant is okay so what i meant was the whole the whole bar faces outwards but she meant as in the sharp bit faces inwards oh That's what you meant, right yeah okay so to avoid okay. snagging on your clothes or on anything have the pointy bit when you, if you have you. your hand like this have yeah. the pointy bit facing towards you okay yeah. somehow that stops it from snagging i don't know and but I wear yours 24-7? 24-7. I don't take mm. it off. The only time I took it off was to paint the house. That was literally right. it. <laughs> okay, I'll have to go back to my store. We'll make an appointment. Maybe I'll see them in two months. <laughs> if they had the diamond one when I bought mine, because I bought mine just before, I definitely would have bought that one. You would have gotten the diamond one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. They only I did try it on though. Um, but it was a spendy month. Uh, and it was it's a spendy year, let's just be honest. <laughs> uh so I I just had to I had to pick one of the two when I was there in April, but I definitely want to go back maybe for 2022. Yeah. Andre Andre's here. So she says protection like like the like the Greek wear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the evil eye, yes, correct. Yeah. Like the evil eye. So mm-hmm. you wear it this way. So it's sort of like a the sharp bit doesn't face you. The sharp bit faces outwards. So we put people in this. Yeah, we that up in the direction and got it all wrong. <laughs> when I look at you guys, it looks it looks like the sharp bit is facing yourself. <laughs> very confusing <laughs> yeah. anyway i'll have to check back with you later <laughs> study the study the screenshot um <laughs> okay um stella can you uh tell someone who is starting their luxury journey today what advice is uh, advice would you give that individual or those people we like to ask this question to our guests. To everyone, everyone, yeah. <laughs> everyone gives a different answer. <laughs> yeah. um, I would say, I watched actually with, um, is it Michelle, when she was like, just buy more. Yeah. <laughs> <Maybe> yeah. <not. laughs> She's the like, more, more the merrier. We were all taken aback because we were like, expecting her <laughs> to say, oh, you know. Because <laughs> like, oh. you know the I standard knew, answer I bought for more. <laughs> people is to, oh, I shouldn't have spent as much, blah, blah, blah. But her answer was the total opposite, which was like, Oh my gosh, this is the best. She said, <laughs> the if best I knew moment, I would have bought more. <laughs> I wish I'd bought more. So I've actually sold, I I counted it recently, 29 bags in my lifetime, which I think is actually a lot. So I've made obviously a lot of mistakes. Um, so I don't know if I'm the best person to ask that question. But what I would say is probably don't listen to everyone else and go with what you truly like because you will end up regretting it. So go with what you really, really do enjoy and like. I mean, I've got bags here that I'm looking at that probably so many people on Instagram wouldn't buy, but 
I really like them and they suit my lifestyle. And I think that's the main thing. As long as they suit your lifestyle and you really have that feeling when you 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 look at it and you want to buy it, then I think that's the main thing. Well, that's actually, good, to, to that point, uh, how would you know? Because, like, that's something that I went through. I definitely uh, did not start watching YouTube until much later. Um, so I was not really influenced by YouTube with my earlier purchases. I definitely just bought things that I liked. But there were definitely still things that I bought in the past that totally did not work. There are uh, There are things that I buy even now. Uh, and it's not necessarily luxury handbags. It can be clothes, whatnot, that I liked at the moment. I buy it. And, you know, a few years later, the label is still on, never worn. I end up consigning it. Uh, it happens It happens to me more often than I like. I obviously don't do as many mistakes now with luxury handbags because they're so expensive, I think, twice. Um, but how would you how would you combat that? Like, I'm still buying things that I like, but sometimes it still didn't work out. Yeah, I think you can. I think there's only so much you can do because your taste will change, right? Yes. So that sounds like it's more about yeah. your taste changing than anything else. So at that time, you bought what you really liked, and that's all you can. That's all you can do. I mean, I'm sure there's been things that I've bought that I really liked at the time, and then a few years later, I'm like, oh, I'm not really feeling it anymore. Mm -hmm. But I think. It's boring, but if you stay with the classics, it's less likely to happen. But that is boring. Mm. So it, I mean, it, it depends how you want to play it, but um, play it safe or go a bit wild and buy a green bag. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, that, that, would, that would really work for me. If I always stayed with classics and didn't buy all the different colors and the different new releases then i would it's probably fun, right? it better otherwise it's just a bit boring if you just stick with the classics so it's nice to venture out sometimes i definitely do <laughs> i think made a lot of mistakes the mistakes i think a, a quote unquote mistakes right it's, it's not yes. it's not really a mistake because it's you loved it and you bought it at the moment then you then after that it's just you turn back you say oh i wish i shouldn't have bought it but if you didn't do it you would have known, right? Yeah, you it's the process. Mine, and then yeah. just like, and then you have regrets. What if I didn't? What I should have bought it because now it's it's you know no more in production. You know it's sold out. You can't get it anymore. Oh, I wish I bought a black trendy as well, but now it's so expensive. I'm like, I can buy it, but it, something's stopping me. Actually, to that point, do you think that you would wear the black? more yes probably yeah. okay in yeah. that case i'd say just go for it <laughs> like the bullet i honestly like i was asking you if you would wear it more because i i always i always get scared if i buy a duplicate style even if it's a different color um that i would still end up using one over the other yeah. however in your case if you're actually going to use the black one more then i i say just bite the bullet that once and then just just do it <laughs> then there's always bad influence maybe don't listen to me <laughs> but then they'll be like oh I've, okay i've bitten the bullet i bought it and then they'll be like oh, should i just get another classic flap should i bite the bullet right. again? so like how many bullets do you buy that's I true like, you gotta really love it though like really love it like ah so when i see people with the black trendy i'm like oh god that looks so good yeah, I do really, really like it, but I don't know. We'll see. I mean, half of these bags, I wasn't planning on buying them, and they, I, I end up walking home with them. So you never know. You and never I know. Never, never, never know. And actually, in the pandemic, because you were talking about how the pandemic made you buy like things that you never expected yourself to buy, I think the pandemic did that for myself i think amy you you're a victim of that as well <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but we're not we're, it, you, you know it turned out to be okay you know considering that the prices has gone up so much yeah you know? yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i know i am truly happy with uh with yo like you know the yolo the sorry the yolo-ness yolo yes 
you can call them mistakes some of them yes but it's also the process even if it's just look the, there are times where you know after accumulating a, a while then you feel the guilt or you feel that anxiety so you know you remedy that uh, even that in, in itself is a process is a learning process and it might have just been sort of like that this whole process was accelerated this past two years i would say like this past two years has been insane for everyone of course but um i think it's okay like you can forgive yourself and just look at it as like a blip in your life right 10 years later it's like that's a blip in your life <laughs> Did not happen. Just get the black trendy. <laughs> <Just erase okay>. it. <laughs> um, yeah. Before they have another price increase. It, oh, that's God. the thing. Like the price increase makes every drives everyone crazy. And it uh you know, for me, price increases, uh, you guys can comment too after. Like they do they do make me feel like, oh my gosh, I need to get the next thing that i want before it increases again it, it does make me act somehow um am i mad about that no but uh, i have this weakness right with chanel especially they always end up no matter how many times i tell myself okay i did this damage this time i should just relax the next collection just chill amy don't buy any more things but they always end up coming with something that I love I always end up having to go like there's no way I'm gonna miss out again like that type of mentality and it's just <laughs> I'm not mad at it like I said I'm not mad at it but it's 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 crazy it's it feels very accelerated like I said it just feels mm -hmm. like the past two years has been the equivalent of my last six years or something you know just it, it does definitely it's it's bad Oh, with the question here. I think I missed one from Andrea. I'll scroll up later. Yes, yes, a, yes. Let's pull this in first. VJ loves the trendy CC is my favorite bag from Chanel, and I want to buy the new one with rose gold hardware. Yes. I really don't want to have three of the same in my collection. So should I sell one? Sell one too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have? Is it is it the same color leather though, and just a different hardware? I have black with yellow gold and mink color from 16. Okay, okay. Right. Oh my god, the mink. Oh, I love that color. <laughs> the mink. I love that color. Um, I think the, the rose gold only came or comes out in the black, I think. So and it's only this season, up. this current yeah. season, the 22C. Yeah. So they did the rose gold in the classic gold. flap last season. And they are doing it now on the trendy CC. I, I, it's it's probably a rose gold trend. Hmm. Um, I okay, so to answer VJ, I personally don't know if I would jump on the rose gold hardware unless you absolutely like, like you just cannot live without one. Um, because honestly, only you see the rose gold from afar. It's really so similar from your current one because you already have a black with yellow gold. Because mm. I have that one. I have the black with yellow gold. Mm. And um, I'm not uh, I'm not tempted by the rose gold with the black one, even though it's just as gorgeous. Mm. I just feel like when you have too many of the similar bags, you always end up wearing one more than another. So unless you really want to sell your yellow gold black one uh, to make up the funds and get the rose gold, because that's absolutely the one that you cannot live without, then go for it. Um, but... Yeah, my personal it's similar though. Yeah, yeah. Like if it was up to me, I would just, I would just, you know, leave it at that. Like I won't go for the rose gold because it's too similar in a way. I don't know how I feel about the rose gold from Chanel. I don't know if I like it. Yeah, same. I'm not it's sure. It's a bit too like, you know, like the two P's in England. We've got pennies, money, the money. Yeah, it's too coppery. Money. Too much but, copper. Yeah, I don't. It's not. It's not rose gold to me. It's quite pink. I guess pink different pink. rose gold have, uh, you know how some jewelry's rose gold is so much more red, yellow, pink. Uh, actually, it's more red. It's it's not even pink. It's mm. it's kind of very coppery color. Yeah. Whereas, um, like Cartier, is very yellow. Mm. Like their rose gold is very light pink, basically. So it's just a spectrum. Uh, and I feel like Chanel is just doing the 
sort of like the slightly darker pink. Well, I don't I'm mind it. It's just that I feel that there's two similar because it's the same bag from afar. Yeah. From afar, it, like literally, there's no difference. It's the same bag because they're both black. If it was a different leather color, then mm -hmm. that makes more of an impact. I feel so. That's I just say, what I think. VJ, let me know what you're gonna end up doing. <laughs> if anyone does want to get anything rose gold from Chanel, I'd say check the inside of the bag because. Mm -hmm. They're using the gold for the interior. So, you know, like in the, the um, oh. flags, you know, it's got that little, little button inside that no one uses for the flap. That was gold, whereas everything else was rose gold. So right. it looks funny as well. So I don't know if they're doing anything like that, but I would double check. Mm. Would you do it? Would you buy it? Would you buy it? Stella? The rose gold? Yeah. No. Uh, Purely no. because I don't really like the color i think the black with yellow gold stands out i've i saw a couple of pictures of the rose gold it's nice but um yeah i think it's the tone of the rose gold yeah that looks a bit it doesn't i, I think the contrast doesn't come out as much with the black do but you guys it's, know, it's also a nice look do you guys still. know bonjour aika aika Ica, yeah. I watch yeah. her, yeah. He got a um Birkin with rose gold hardware. Now mm. I'm not into Hermes really, but when I saw her bag, I messaged her, I was like, My god, your gold looks gorgeous. She said it's rose gold. I was like, Wow, it's really pretty. Right. So that tone of rose gold, I think, is really, really nice. It's more subtle. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Agreed. Okay, I'm going to scroll up. There was one question for you from Andre. Ah, okay. When we were talking about your... Okay, sorry. I missed this, Andre. So how easy or hard was it to start the jewel, jewelry line? So it's easy to start in the sense of, you know, there's certain things that you have to do and you just do it and you've started your business. But it's hard to get the word out there because to pay for... The amount that you need to pay for marketing to actually get your brand visible online is beyond our reach. So in that sense, it's hard. Um, but otherwise, if you know what you like and you know the designs, that's not really hard. And that's the fun bit, that's the creative bit. But actually getting people to be aware of the brand, that's the hard part. Mm. So from... You said you said that it took uh, so from inception to like you know basically from agreeing to do the business until you launch. How long did it take? Again, you said seven eight months. Right. Is that considered a long time for jewelry? Uh, I don't know. Business? It was lockdown, so that was the only thing that I was working on. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. It was a lot of hours, but I'm not sure. I've never done it before, so I don't know <laughs> how long it's supposed to take or if there is a um, right amount of time. But we're still developing it now. It's, it's only just turning a year old. Right. You, it's so fast. One year already. I know. It's gone so quick. That's crazy. I think it's good to feel that it's gone quick. It means that you're just doing something that you love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. That is true. Because even with this luxury live show, before we realized it, it's already been a year when we had our anniversary. It was like, wow, I can't believe that we've been doing extra live streams every single week. And sometimes, uh, not sometimes, but recently we started doing membership. So it's like twice a week. So yeah, but it's, you know, the members make the Luxies and the members, they, they, they make it happen for us, right? They show up and that makes the big difference. Um, so Stella, can you tell us what would be your best, um, and worst luxury purchases and why? Okay. <laughs> My best and worst. I know um, your worst. You shared with me that day. Is it the, is it the one in white? Oh, no, 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 not white. Um, black. Do you have black or cream? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see what is your worst. <laughs> Worst bag I know. What are you thinking of? What did I say? I think it's going to be the same one. 
Okay, so I think for me, oh no, I don't think it's what you're thinking. My my, person, my worst is the Givenchy Antigona. Oh. Have you ever owned that bag? I've always sort of kind of looked at it, tried it in the store. So I got heavy. medium and it was so heavy. It was so uncomfortable. It was so bulky that I think I sold it like a month later. Mm. Wow. So for me, that's my worst. What cat? What did I say to you? I thought you said your the Dior Bobby was it? You had two, then you sold one, right? No, I've never had two. Oh. No, Bobby I, was saddle. Michelle one. Yeah, Michelle doesn't like it, but I remember I thought we chatted and you said you had two and you I told one. you that I don't use it as much. Oh, as you I don't use it as much. Okay, okay. Um but the saddle I had two and I saw Ah, the saddle. Okay, yeah, the saddle you had two bags. Yeah, which I know you guys aren't a fan of. <laughs> <laughs> I recently tried on one. Uh it must be a small or smaller mini size. Um Look, the, the it's the look. If you if you're buying that bag, it's really just for. It's like it's like it's like my micro Chanel bag. It's actually I disagree. My, my micro Chanel bag not only does it look good, so it's the look, but it for me it's functional. Whereas I feel like for the saddle bag, because the size looks bigger, you would expect it to fit your phone and whatnot, but the mini size definitely didn't fit a phone, so. No, the mini, I think, isn't convenient at all. The one that I have, which is, I don't know what they call it, but the standard size, fits everything that I would fit in any other bag. So I don't have a problem with it, but I know that a, a lot of people don't like the look. Did you say it looks like a liver or something? <laughs> Looks like a piece of human organ. <laughs> it looks like the liver. <laughs> for yeah, me, it's not so much the liver, liver shape. Uh, that's not what I thought anyway. For me, it's the fact that it has an odd shape. So things that you put inside will sort of fall in a different angle. Um, that usually, it's not just to that bag. It's like most bags that has not a straight shape. That in itself does bug me in general. So... So the trick that I've found with the saddle bag is to keep it stuffed. If I keep my bag stuffed, it fits everything I need it to fit. Okay. So Oh, you mean you have to use the whole bag? You can't you can Is that what I mean? Keep it so stuffed. When I'm using it to put um paper inside oh. to keep it stuffed. I don't know is that not the technical term? I don't know. <laughs> so um, but, but, but when your things are inside, wouldn't they be like because it's in this kind of shape. But it's just like any shape. You're I think fitting. I know what Stella means. It's like when they're so compacted together, they can't move anyway. Right? No, no they don't move. So it just is, it stays in the shape of, it, it stays in the direction or in a whatever way that you put your stuff in, basically. I feel like you love to hate the saddle. That's the thing. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was telling Amy that after analyzing all of Dior's bag, honest, I can honestly see why the saddle bag is one of the more popular bags. Because every other Dior bag that, I mean, I have tried, um, there is always something not good enough for it. So I'm just, this is me and my perspective. I, any Dior lovers, <laughs> don't hate me. <laughs> They're going to. Okay. So the Lady Dior, it's, beautiful but it's hard to get in and out of the bag it's got the two the two the the rings right the rings and it's just clunky because it's and it's not flexible right it's not flexible it so is that, my own yeah, one it's beautiful <laughs> but still that's an issue then you've got the book tote huge bag but it's actually not very user friendly unless you you don't carry the bag walking around it's like mainly for the car or you're just carrying it for a little bit. Otherwise, it's too small to put on the shoulder. If you stuff it too much, it's too heavy to carry in your hand. It's not the most comfortable as well. Then what else do we have? Then we have your bobby bag, which... I've owned everything you've mentioned so far, by the way. <laughs> so then the bobby bag, 
you've got the little two corners of the bag, which, why? <laughs> it just like, doesn't it take up some space? And it's the depth of the bag as well. What else? Oh, and then the bag that I had, I had. Um, the Montaigne. The Montaigne. Looks great. You know, you would think that it fits a ton. No, it doesn't. It looks big, but it's actually really compact and small. And the clip is not tight. So if you clip it, it you got to sort of like get exactly that little nubbin to go into the lock and you like clip it in and then it locks. Otherwise, it's a fussy lock. So oh, wait, do you mean that it opens on its own? No, uh, it doesn't open on its own, but it's hard to just get that one T. Was it a T? Um, I think it's a T. You have to make sure you're putting yeah, it you in. Yeah, you got to go exactly on that spot and then you got to press it in. Otherwise, if it's otherwise it's it doesn't clip in. You need to clip in. Right. So that's fussy. So therefore, the Dior bag is the Dior saddle bag is the most easiest to use. Because you basically open it and it's all space. It's like, except the shape is odd. And he's got a back pocket. So I've owned every bag that you've mentioned. I still own the, <laughs> the Montaigne and the saddle. The book tote I sold. I can't remember why at the time. I think it was because I wanted it for traveling. And when I went on the aeroplane with that bag, you can't put it under the seat in front of you like you can mm -hmm. with a level. Mm -hmm. The level you can just like push it's it up. Stiff, the right? it's large. Yeah, and you can't do that with the book tote. Um, so I think I sold it for that reason. The Montaigne, I think, I think if you really like the bag though, the things that you're mentioning wouldn't really be an issue. That's the yeah, thing. The look. When you really like a bag, so like with the let's say the flat bag, it's got this. You've got two flaps to get to. True. Right? So you just deal with it. It's like oh, you don't even. It's not even a con because you love the bag. So I think that's got something to do with what you're saying. Maybe. True. 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 Uh, true. True. Yeah. But I, I love I, the Montaigne. I love the look. It's just that I can objectively say that it's sort of like. It doesn't look as big as it seems. Doesn't so, the Montaigne fit as much as the boy bag? That's what I find. It does? No. For me, I found it a little bit smaller. And no, I would but yours would fit more because it was a fabric one. So it's more flexible. You would, you would think, right? No. <laughs> because if you stuff it too much, I can't clip it. Okay. Yeah. So that was a little bit of like... Mm, now you've got your micro bag, so I'm sure you'd be fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> but the, the whole point of micro bags is that it's so lightweight that you don't feel it. And you can't do that with the normal handbag, which already weighs maybe a pound or a pound and so. So I think that's the big difference. And micro bags are so cute. There's a bag that I don't know if you would... I don't know if you would call it a micro bag. For me, it's a micro bag. Have you seen the new, I don't know if it's new actually, from Celine. It's the, the, they don't have a proper name for it. It's called the oval crossbody. It looks like the pig bag from Hermes. Have you seen that one? The the bum bag? It isn't a bum bag. It's Yes, that bum bag from Hermes. But the Celine one is a crossbody bag. And I really Ooh. want that bag. But I'm I don't look it up. You can't fit your phone in it. Um, it's an amazing price point. Um, let me see if I can find it. I'm sure I will because, yeah, here we go. I've been looking at it nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, show us the picture of it. Can you see? Uh, let me see. Can you see that? Ooh. Ooh. That's cute. Yeah, it does look like my pig bag. And that's in the army green, and they've got it in a tan as well. And it's how much is it? You see it in tan, mm. really pretty. It is uh, very nice, yeah. And it is 690 pounds. Oh, that's you a really good it. price. You can see it worn. Oh, it is really cute, like that. Okay, oh, so it's like a nomad bag. Oh my gosh, it's a <laughs> 
<laughs> I really like that bag. I've been looking at it. And I like the tan, but I've got the bobby in the tan. So I'm thinking I don't need another tan bag. So I, I might go for the army green. But that's as micro as I think I would go. Right. That's, yeah, that's a good size. Actually, that's a good size. Well, Stella, before we get into, um, before we ask you about your Hermes sales journey or whatever you end up getting and how it yeah. was, could you tell us if you had to only keep five of your handbags, which ones would they be? Okay. How many do you have now? How many do you have now? How many handbags? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not that many. Not as many as you guys, I'm sure. I think I've maybe got 18, 19. Oh, we're close. We're not that many. Yeah, not that many. You don't need loads and loads, I think. So <laughs> no, that oh, is yeah. a great number. I always strive to be around 20. I think the reason why I have more than 20 is because I count each micro bag as a bag too. Okay. But I have so many micro bags. <laughs> <laughs> You could open a shop now with your micro. I, I totally can. I, it's <laughs> just insane how much it adds up to. Um, I think five. Five. Okay. I would pick. Okay. I would pick this. Okay. Oh. Because now that I'm going out more, the world is finally opening here in the UK. We've got parties constantly and I've been reaching for this. Nice. So I think you need like a clutch or something for when you go out. So I would pick that. I would pick, oh dear. I would pick my 19. Yes, oh. I love this bag. Oh, Another nice. bag that I love. Kat, you do need to buy it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> buy it before it's too late. <laughs> you really, oh really God. do. It's such a good bag. I can't even tell you. It's such a good bag. So if I get to go, if I get to go Paris next year, we'll see. I can't, I can't, I, I would rather have a holiday and save some money there than to pay the Singaporean prices. Um, that's two, right? Yeah, that's two. I would go with oh, classic. This is a catfish bag. It's what? <laughs> In a, in a, it's you know like the Hermes pig bag this is the catfish oh I see oh okay. my goodness I did not see it until you said it I'm like what catfish are you talking about you always ruin everything <laughs> no no it's that's so what bad. that's what they're all called if you if you ask the honkies that's what they call it in, and I don't know what's the honky word for catfish I don't know I don't know what I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll take the word. <laughs> you know what catfish is? You know the fish? It's like the little mustache of that catfish. Okay. So this, this I was thinking this and my palm spring. So just something mm. easy that you don't have to worry about. That's what I would go with that one. I actually really like this bag. Like if I, I think earlier on, if I didn't buy, yeah, this was one of the bags that I considered for work. Right when work was still a thing <laughs> in the office, <laughs> I actually like this one in black. It's yeah, bag. it's a great bag. I have to say, it's so easy to use. It's carefree, and I remember. I know this sounds really awful, but I remember when I went to Harrods and I was looking at this bag, and I asked the sales associate how much it is. When he told me, I was like, "Is that it?" Because I'm used to stupid prices. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is coming home with me. And you can't scratch it. You can't. Nothing can happen to that bag. It's it's a really good bag. Um, that's three. I would say my Neverfull. Mm, yeah. I don't know what my fifth one would be. <laughs> um, probably. My medium or the trendy? Probably. I was waiting for you to choose the trendy. <laughs> I thought yeah, I was waiting trendy. for you to choose the trendy. I was like, if she doesn't choose the trendy, she should not be buying the black trendy. <laughs> yeah. I think five is so limiting. It's just. It is, yeah. Too limiting. But it's just a <laughs> hypothesis, right? We we all. Yeah. Just, yeah. I think it's just nice for because we always get these questions ourselves too. Like I think. People just want to know, oh, which are your absolute favorite? Like, absolute. 
like if you and then you give them those choices of course you can always change your mind later too that's fine but at this moment which are your best five ones right oh those are great love love awesome. the choices okay before we get into a few the questions stuff, actually yeah i saw a couple hang on let me pull it in okay from Pooja. Hi, Stella. How was your purchase experience been at Chanel UK? And since there are no wish lists in UK, unlike other countries, how do we get a bag that's deemed as hard to get? Is this to do with Hermes? No, Chanel. Wish lists. Oh, I see. Sorry. When you say wish lists, I thought of Hermes. Okay. Um... I, I think it must be wait lists right wait yeah they don't have yeah mm. we don't so, have wait lists here either so it just depends where okay so, yeah um so i've never really had a bad experience at chanel and i think i might be the anomaly because i always hear of people saying that they've walked in and they weren't treated very well but i've never had that and i think part of that is because I don't really care like where I'm walking into. I'll walk in with wearing my Converse and jogging bottom. I don't, I don't care. It, I'm, to me, I'm walking into a shop, right? And I'm going to be spending my own money. So I, the last thing that I want to do is to be felt, to be made to feel like I shouldn't be there because mm. we all have a right to be everywhere. Um, so I've never really had that bad experience. Um, I think the main thing, if you want anything, is to form a relationship with somebody and i have done that at harrods um during lockdown weirdly enough um and i think it was probably because he thought i was crazy because i was trying to buy a bag when even the shops weren't open <laughs> so i think that is partly to do with it but i had already bought something from him beforehand so i had his contact details um but if you want something, you have to be really quick. You've got to be quick. So as soon as you know it's coming out, you've got to ask to be put on the wait list. And then it's just a waiting game, really. But there's no, there's no, I don't think there's any secret behind it. Yeah. I agree. I would say, um, I would say the same thing. Relationship is everything, especially with, uh, Chanel, Hermes, especially those are the most coveted brands. LV, all the other brands too, but especially Chanel. Um, the, I think for the hot items, you you have to come in from a from a perspective of you're gonna try your best to get it, but if you cannot get it. It is what it is, right? You you win some, you lose some. That's that's how it's always been. Um, I think when you what you see on social media or on YouTube, people unbox the next hottest item or the best colors or whatever a rainbow, but those are the wins, and you don't mm -hmm. see the losses or you don't hear about the losses as much. Uh, but everybody wins a little bit and everybody loses a little bit. So it's that mentality that you need to keep to keep in mind, I guess, but you try your best at getting it, of course. And like Stella said, ask about those items as early as you can, the moment that you find out that it's coming in that season. And if it happens to be yours, it's fate, then it's yours. Yeah, it really is. Totally agree. And you, and I'm going to add to that. So the S, I think all three of us agree that you need to have an essay, Like you just need to have that connection with at least one and to add to that, two things. One, you need to buy with that person. Yes. So a little bit like Hermes, right? You just can't just say, I want something and totally not buy anything from this essay. Like if you want to, if you are in for the either a trendy item, a unicorn item or the classic piece, you sort of still need to have that little bit of that profile at the end of the day. Even if it's a pair of earrings, just to show that you... You're working with that essay, not really working with the brand, but with that essay themselves. Yeah. And then be loyal. Like, don't buy from other essays. That works in Singapore and also in Malaysia because if they see that you're buying from various stores, you know, they may they may say, you know what, she'll get it from another place, so I won't 
I won't bother. So, yeah. so you gotta kind of have that loyalty. It, it's in in a mess. It's so apparent. But even in Chanel, actually, there is you. You need to do it, right? You need yeah. to stick to a little bit of like loyalty element there. So talking about loyalty, I this guy that um, I now is my sales associate at Harrods. In the summer, I was just walking around Selfridges, walked into the Harrods section on one of the floors, and um, I saw this really cute, bright pink. It was like a um, messenger, not messenger bag, what are they called? Like your um, Chanel one cat that you have, the black one. Flap? Camera, Camera bag? bag? Camera bag, that's it, sorry. Um, and I thought it, the price was really good, and I thought this is perfect for the summer. And I was going to buy it. And we got up to the till. She was putting, she, I wrote down, you know, they give you the card and you write down your details. I'd never shopped at Chanel Selfridges at all, I don't think. And she found me on the system and she wouldn't sell me the bag because I had bought my um, my mini. So she said, you're not allowed. We, we can't sell you another bag because you've bought a bag in the last two months. I was like, oh, my God, this is actually a thing. I couldn't believe it. So then I messaged my guy at Harrods, and he was like, yeah, it's fine. If you want it, I've got it, and I'll sell it to you. So it is really who you know. Yeah. She wasn't going to sell it to me, and he was fine selling it to me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's and very I'm strict, like, though. If it's been a that. few months, that's very strict. I thought it was one per month. Yeah, but she got that. it in the end. <laughs> I know I didn't. I've, oh, you didn't buy it in the I'm end. Really cut off by it. I was like, oh, I don't want it then. <laughs> oh. but, um, yeah, two, two. It was one in the last two months. So I think it's one every quarter here. Oh, is it? I think so. But I think maybe each boutique's different. But because he knew me, he was like, "It's fine if you want it." Right. I mean, I don't really know what it is in here. I just keep hearing that it's one per month, but I don't really know anybody about, that buys a bag every month, honestly. Like, either that means a Chanel bag, bag every month. month. You'd be surprised. They're, really? they're, they're perfect. As long, as, I, I, I mean, as long as you count micro bags as a bag, then, then yes. <laughs> but to buy an actual, like, handbag, handbag every month, that is a lot. Yeah, so their their perfect clientele isn't us. That's mm, true. That's not us. Their clientele are the people that don't think twice and have the money and they'll go and drop right. 20, 100 grand on ready to wear and handbags. Right. So that quota system should not apply to them. Actually, the quota system doesn't apply to them. It doesn't apply to us because we don't have the money. It actually applies <laughs> to the mid <laughs> to the group that is taking advantage of Chanel. Yeah, it's definitely the reselling because and then yeah. again another time I was in Bond Street and I got chatting to one of the sales associates and she was quite she was a little bit cold with me in the beginning and then when she realised that I'm not trying to I'm not a reseller or whatever she actually opened up and she said that to me that they are doing that because I mean she was saying that there's people that what they'll do is they'll find someone on Bond Street and they'll say to them here's my card go and buy this bag and i'll give you a cut that's crazy yeah so it, it happens a lot and that's what they're trying to stop right hmm. okay. but they could just buy it and then and then just run out with it too right I anyway so but not my issue <laughs> yeah <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> i'm like wow this is beyond <laughs> Yeah. All right. I'm going to pull another question from Mashuya19. So I'm honestly a little scared of buying the classic flap because of how things are around pandemic, unemployment, and then people really stare at your stuff. How do you manage that? Hmm. Um, I think if you don't feel comfortable, then definitely don't. And it's a lot of money, isn't it? It's not like, I mean, when I bought my classic flap, it wasn't that expensive. And I don't think I would buy one now. I mean, never say never, but I really don't see myself doing it. Um, 
but I think you have to be comfortable. And if you're not comfortable, then maybe it's not right. And there's so many other nice bags out there that you'll probably wear more often than the flap. Because I bought mine in 2015 and I probably worn it less than 10 times, probably, realistically. True. I'm not a good person to answer this because in Singapore, um, the places that I go, okay, so it's so common to see luxury things. Like, I don't know, it's just like <laughs> a lot of people carry luxury handbags around. So um, they don't, it's so common that nobody stares anymore. They stare when you've got something that is totally different but i went to orchard so that's like the main shopping district maybe about three or four weeks ago and i swear i could have counted 20 okay chanel flaps with different people i'm walking like oh there's one oh there's one who's there so um i guess it's a little yeah with pen you know singapore i think they they contain the situation, right? Um, there definitely is, you know, it's struggling, but but yeah, I, I it's hard for me to answer this question because I see it's so common. It's so common. Yeah, it's so common. Even before, but every it's just so common. It's what's not common is let's say if somebody's carrying a Himalayan Birkin, then go like, oh, everybody's staring at the back. Otherwise, yeah. So different in Singapore, but in Malaysia, where you know, it's it, this is where I would answer like, yeah, I totally would not be carrying any of my classic flaps around because it's, it's, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it. In fact, wouldn't buy, won't carry. It's very different here. Hmm. I think for me, um, I I'm not feeling the the feeling that you're describing. I think it's probably because I just I only wear my nicest bags, so the classic flap being one of them, to places that are just as safe and just as mm -hmm. nice. So like I, I would probably go, you know, go to downtown, the the luxury boutiques, department stores, or go shopping around there. I I, I feel okay going and wearing my bags in that area. But if I were to go I don't know, go to the local street here uh, for grocery shopping and it's literally mom and pop shops and like you see people carrying like five grocery bags and walking to the bus stop and like I, it's not that I won't carry any luxury bags there. If I was already carrying one, I would, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a point to carry it just to go there, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so it's sort of you just choose which bags you wear on the, depending on what occasion. Uh, and I will plug again. <laughs> I really honestly love micro bags for that reason because they're mm -hmm. so small. I sometimes, uh, especially now in the winter, I just wear it inside my coat. Uh, so I'm still wearing a, a piece of luxury, something that makes my heart sing but it's not really showing it's just hidden inside uh, and i only show it when i want to show it so you've just reminded me by saying that you don't you don't just wear a bag at the point of wearing a bag i actually did wear a bag to wear a bag during lockdown when we'd go on our walks i'd be like right i'd actually get my outfit <laughs> because there was nowhere to go and nothing to do right. our walks would be right i'm gonna wear this jacket with this bag and these boots literally <laughs> just reminded me and of you that. have to you have to like you know to stay sane you just have to do that sometimes and I do that too like I would just dress up for no reason just going to Costco but it's not gonna be every time um no. it's just it just depends even Costco is pretty safe <laughs> so like my point is like I just uh you I think you you sort of get used to it more and more as you get more comfortable uh, that's one but it all it also it just depends on where you go what you're doing that day so you just kind of have to get used to it in a sense but if it's if you really feel unsafe and scared then don't do it yeah, yeah don't yeah. do it you'd be yeah. so uncomfortable you'd be like yeah constantly not worth looking it. over your shoulder then just no don't do it okay 
Well, before we take other questions, let's let's start on the Hermes stuff before because we're all... <laughs> let's ask so the Hermes sale. Should I just tell you or yeah, you... let us know. So maybe we'll give a little backstory. Let me just remove this. So you got invited to the Hermes sale in the UK, and you're like I'm laughing because oh. when I got my invitation, I was like, what? I messaged you straight away, didn't I, Cat? I was yeah. like, I've received this. I don't know if it's fake. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> I thought it was a fake invite. I and really why... Didn't. Tell us why did you think it's fake? Like, because... Okay, so let me say, in Singapore, this whole Hermes sale is such a mystery. Okay. Who gets invited? When it is? Where it is? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Essays don't talk about it. It's such a hush-hush thing. And only VIPs get invited. Like probably you spend a house and more with Hermes and you get invited to the sale. That kind of thing. Okay. So that's not me. A hundred percent. I'm not a VIP. I've not spent a hundred thousand. <laughs> I probably have just about spent maybe three thousand, if that. Like I don't know why I was invited. I can't answer that question. But I received an invitation probably a month before the event from Hermes. And it was like, click here to book a slot. So I was like, okay, clicked on it, booked my slot, didn't think anything of it. I thought, let's see if I actually get like an actual invite. And then I did. And I don't know why I was, in I genuinely have no idea why I was invited. I haven't bought anything from Hermes this year. Nothing, not one thing. Um, in my lifetime, I have probably bought three or four Click H bracelets and two pairs of Varan sandals, and that's it. Mm. So I really don't know why I was invited. I really, really don't know why. Um, is your essay the one that you bought the things with? Uh, with is she or he still there? I have no idea. I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I went in, I think it was last summer, I went and bought my Iran sandals. No idea who she is. I didn't take her card. I couldn't tell you what she looks like. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea why I was invited. <laughs> why does this, this thing happen in Singapore? <laughs> um, it was one of the craziest things I've ever done in terms of a shopping experience. It's probably the least luxurious shopping experience. The most tiring, um, yeah, it, it was crazy. I Basically, you, you get a slot of, I think my slot was between 1 and 3 p.m. Um, and I got there for 12.30 and I queued to get in maybe two and a half hours to just get in. And when you, just when you thought you were getting in, so there was one queue, I was like, oh, I'm at the front. Just when you thought walking through, I was like, are you kidding me? There was another queue. I was like, oh my God. And it's one of those things where you've come so far, you can't yeah. leave because you've been queuing for an hour. You're like, I can't leave now. So yeah, two and a half hours to get in. And the annoying thing was that if you had turned up, you know, I said, you've got your slot between one and three. If I had turned up at quarter to three, they would have let me straight through. So people that were cute, that were arriving just before their slot was ending, they were letting them go straight in. And everyone else was standing there like, we've been standing here for hours and they've just turned up and they're going in. It made no sense. The way that they'd sorted it, it just, it made absolutely no sense. Um, so once you get in, you're not allowed to... You're not allowed. To, yes, I knew this. For some reason, I knew this. You're not allowed to take a handbag in there. So you give in your handbag, you give in um, your coat, you take all your belongings from your handbag, and they give you like this clear bag to take inside. Um, and the first place that I went into was the shoe section, and you had to queue to get in the shoe section. So that was like another half hour queue. And when I was in there, you're allowed, I think it was 20 minutes, maybe 15, I can't remember, in that section. 
and you're only allowed to buy one pair of Varan sandals and I think six shoes in total. I could have these numbers so wrong because it's been over a month since I went. Um, but it, was, it wasn't like, oh, you go and have a look. There were people there. It was like you were at a market. So there were people there that were in the back and they'd be bringing out a box and they'd be like, I've got these yellow Iran size five, size five. And then all these women would be like, me, me. Like it was literally that. <laughs> really? When I first got in there, I was looking, I was like, oh my God. And then I thought, I've just got to play this game. Otherwise I'm not going to get anything. So I was like, I'll take those. <laughs> it was like one of them. But um, I'm, yeah, it was a very crazy experience. And then they had, they had clothing, which I didn't really look at too much. They had shoes, they had silks, they had hats. And then to pay was another hour and a half wait, something like that. It was torture. It was absolute torture. Did you Did at you least end again? up with anything? Yes. Nothing. One pair of shoes. I got one pair of shoes. I did have two pairs of shoes. I had an Iran pair and these, and then I let them go, the Irans, just as I was getting to the front. So I was like, these, these, they weren't in my size. They were half a size bigger, and I knew they weren't going to be very comfortable. And I didn't, they were like a black with, um, I think like the buckle all over. They were like a black leather with the buckle all over, like um, the design. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really something that I really liked. And I got a silk scarf as well. But the prices were insane. Okay. So, like, I've got these Oasis sandals. And they were in store £580. And I bought them for £174. Mm. So the prices are insane. But it's like, it's like you're at a market. It's like market prices. So I'll show you what I got. Oh, and everything's stamped as well. I don't know if many people know this. So I got these. Oh, pretty. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah. I took them on holiday with me. Um, are they comfortable? Yes, they are. Phew. I don't know if I can show this. Can you see there? There's a stamp. Right. Next. Can you see that? So all mm -hmm. that's for sale. So anything you buy at the sale gets stamped. Oh, and I think that's so you can't sell them on. I think I could be wrong. I don't know. So I I bought these, and I bought a scarf, and I actually only wanted really the scarf because I wanted to um or I want to frame it. Mm. So I got. Don't know if you can even see. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Wait, let me disappear. Oh, yeah, it's all the birds and the tiger in. You can remove me to. Uh, I can remove myself actually. I don't know if you can see, but I got this one. Oh, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying to look at the scarf. I think it was about a hundred pounds. Oh, I think, wow. I think around really nice. Yeah, so I haven't had that framed yet, but that's what I want to do. I wonder what did they do to pick? Did, 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 did the UK Hermes not have any sales at all that they just said, you know what, we need to invite every single customer on in our portfolio? Like, why was UK so... I don't know. I did find out that there is a... VJ, I thought it was a scam. <laughs> <laughs> it was a scam. <laughs> I did find out that there was a company called Atelier or something, and they, they're the ones that hosted the sale. And if you're a member with them, you also could get an invitation. So it wasn't just Hermes clients. I I received my invite from Hermes, but you could also receive an invite from this company that you can pay a fee every year, and um, they 
they will invite you to different sales, not just Hermes, different sales. I've just remembered actually, there was a girl that came up to, uh, I started talking to someone there, I didn't know her, but you're in the queue for so long, you just started speaking to people. And I started, and there was a girl that came up to us and she offered us a hundred pounds for us to take her, because you were only allowed one pair of Iran sandals. So she offered us a hundred pounds to basically pay for her sandals wow. with her card. So she would send us the money and that we pay we would pay buy the sandals oh. and then give her the sandals. But I didn't do it. The other girl did. I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so was it worth it, Stella? Would you read would you do it again? Um I think ask me again next year if I get it in right, which I probably won't. I don't know. Right now, I wouldn't do it again. Um, but maybe in a year's time when the pain has gone and I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exact same thing that, uh, what's her name? Um, it did. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I've never had a child, but it's not very pleasant, I hear, and people keep doing it. So it must be because you kind of forget. You forget to <laughs> go through it again. But you know, if okay, so if you had to, like, if you decide, okay, I'm going to do it again, what would you do differently? Or would you do the same? Would you sneak in at quarter to three? <laughs> if I knew they were still doing that, thing where they would just let you through I would turn up right at the end even though people were really like angry <laughs> um, yeah. I would probably do that um I wouldn't you can't really do anything differently once you're in there once you're in there it's like each man for themselves like hunger games you just try your best <laughs> but um yeah there were a pair of yellow Iran sandals that she called out size five and I wasn't quick enough. Oh. They were really nice. So would you do shoes again first? Or would yeah, you think, I think so. hey, I'll go silk first or no? Shoes. No, I think I'd just go shoes first. Yeah. What else would you have gone? Would you still just do shoes and silk next time? Or would you try other things next time? So there was jewelry not as in fine jewelry i don't think but the enamel jewelry and stuff like that um but the queue for that was another queue oh. to have a look at that i was like i just i can't be bothered for that it was just crazy the way i don't think it was structured very well but, so wait uh, let me try and understand so you were given two hours in each slot is that right yeah but once you're in there, they're not going to say to you well, what time's your slot. So once you're in there, you had to wait maybe two hours to pay. So it just didn't work. Oh, so you could be inside there for four hours and nobody would know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was what, what I was wondering. Like, Because you keep queuing and queuing and queuing. But the thing is, you're wasting time. Are they going to like say, okay, one to three o'clock slot, get the hell out of here and usher everyone out? No, I think it was more a slot for when you can enter than how long you can be there for. Right. So the one to three o'clock, those are the regulars. Those are the regular sales goers. They knew. Yeah. But then they're all different time slots. So when you were booking it, you could do 11 till one or one to three or I don't know, two to four. You know, I think next year what they should have done is they should make 15 minute time slots to let those people in. Like you just show up during that 15 minutes and at the end of that 15 minutes, they just let that 15 minutes time slot people go in and that's it. Mm. Why bother one to three? So you can show up between one to three or even before that. And then you just let in anybody that came at 245. That makes no sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it doesn't. It didn't the whole thing didn't really make yeah, any sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, there was a girl that said to me, I remember she said, I hope we don't have to queue very long as so I have to pick up my son. And I was like, I don't think she <laughs> get someone to help you out. Yeah. <laughs> but 
But I think you've got to be a diehard Hermes fan, I think. I'm I'm not. So for me, I was just like, I'm in it now. I've got to stay here. But I think you've got to really love the, the brand. VJ, I'm not going again next year. Oh. There was a fight in my slot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There's crazy people out there. Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, it, it, were you under the sun? Was it hot? No, Kat, we're in the UK. There's hardly ever any sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we we're lucky crazy. it didn't rain. Oh, yeah, but if it was Singapore... Oh, Two you hours done. in the hot sun, yeah. there will be fights, okay? <laughs> <And we're> like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have that problem. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, it was very crazy. I'm looking at the... Oh, MK is here. So my experience at Hermes sale isn't the same at all. Maybe it's because I went on VIP days. No oh. lie, and very chill. Now that she said VIP days, I did get, I don't know why, I got an invite to the, I think the Sunday was a VIP day, but I couldn't make it um, on that day. But I don't know how I got an invite. I don't know. Maybe I should try and get a Birkin. Just walk in. Have <laughs> <laughs> a Birkin. No, okay. Oh my gosh. No, what was more important than the VIP day? <laughs> <laughs> there was something that I had to do there was something important I think my cousin's baby's christening or something like that I can't remember but there was something I couldn't miss <laughs> oh, or do you think goodness. that you just made an impression on one of the essays that you shopped with and they just remembered to make sure I you're that I'm not charismatic but I, don't, I really don't think so <laughs> So do you think that everybody that shopped at Hermes got invited then? No, because I know a few of my friends that didn't get an invite. Okay. Hmm. So interesting. Very strange. Well, totally did not get anything in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if they had sales. I was going to ask you, do they even have sales there? I they used to. I'm not sure if last year and this year they did. Not sure, but I I know some people do go for the sales, and it's really, really, really cheap. Don't want to know. <laughs> oh, oh, I got okay. So I'm gonna scroll through the questions, Stella. There's one for you <laughs> and the from Chris. Hi, Stella. Where do you find your design inspirations? So, I mean, a lot of the newer designs that are coming through are around the evil eye because I love the evil eye. Mm, me too. So I've got a thing about evil eyes. But um, I think it's just I t just from maybe older pieces that I like, I add a little bit here and a little bit from this piece that I have. It, it honestly could be from anything. Mm. But you try to cater for everyone as well. So there's pieces for everyone. Would you do gold? Do you do gold? You don't do gold now, right? Just gold plating. Solid gold? No. Solid. Very expensive soon. to do solid gold. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. Okay, pulling it. What is this from MK? Has anyone experienced... Uh, Vash, Vash trekking leather at Hermes. Does it feel like, what does it feel like? Is it stiffer than Togo? No idea. <laughs> 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 we'll just have to wait for the, for the audience to, the Luxe crews and all to tell us. I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry, MK, can't help you. Maybe ask again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> ask again tomorrow. <laughs> Andre, what are your thoughts on the LV Petite Mile? Is that the round one? No. No, it's the, it's, the it's like the little square box, uh, clutch box. Oh, of course. 
Oh, yes, of course. Um, I remember going to Louis Vuitton exhibition in like 2014 in London and they had people there making it. Um, and I think that's probably the last time I've ever really paid attention to that bag, if I'm honest. It's, uh, I, I, don't, I don't really get the appeal with it. Is that really harsh? No, no, it's your honest opinion. <laughs> An honest opinion. We like honest opinions. Here. Um, I don't really. I understand that it's a play from obviously the the trunks, but it's just so you can't put anything in it. You can put like lip gloss, some chewing gum. I don't know. I think they come out with a soft version, which I like. Mm. Looks a little bit more user friendly. Yes, I do agree with the soft version. I have tried the soft version when I went back to Montreal to visit my mom and dad. And yeah, I even put my things in it. My large phone, which is my current phones, was fitting in it. And it looked really cute also crossbody. Um, I don't know what it is with LV though it's just um because they've done so many iterations of the petite mal at this point and it's not that I don't like it but it I don't like it enough to want to get one uh, obviously price point is one of the factors I think it was already so expensive even back then mm -hmm. um which you know if I was going to spend that kind of money I would just buy a Chanel Right. Especially back then, like you mentioned, you saw in 2014, I think I tried uh, I tried the soft version in 2018. And then prior to that, um, I mean, I did kind of try on the hard case one. But like you said, it uh, it hardly fit anything. It's so dressy. Right. So, so you would think that, oh, because I like micro bags, that I would like it, too. Um, it's different, though. The micro bag weighs nothing. Again, it's the featherweight. It's the feather light sort of airiness that you don't feel it, but it's there and, and it adds to your look and it fits stuff. But the box, the petite very hard. Right. It's really hard. Yes. It's hard. Yeah. It's, it, I guess it's like a trunk. But wow, I I thought it was, I don't know, for some reason I thought it was five thousand over Singapore dollars. Not not anymore. Oh no, my gosh, it's seven thousand. 400 Singapore dollars. It's expensive. Yeah. I think 5,000 is when it first came out, probably. Mm, that's um, right, that's right. And even, but even, but even 5,000 when it first came out, you could have bought um, a Chanel Mini for much less. Correct, correct. So that was like the, the, the mindset at the time. I'm like, well, it costs this much for that. I'd rather buy Chanel. So hence, it was just an easy decision for me. And it still is today because I don't really covet it. Yeah. Wow, it's expensive, huh? So mm. I think the soft is uh, cheaper, isn't it? The soft one. The soft it one is, is like is. cheaper. Not that much cheaper, actually. It's five thousand <laughs> Singapore dollars. But it's, oh, more it's functional. like one point eight. We're about one point eight to a pound. The, the soft version is more functional. I actually prefer the soft version. Totally. Oh, my gosh. I like it. I mean, I like the Petite Mal. I like the look. I've tried it when it first launched. But when they first launched, I think the design wasn't well thought out yet because it couldn't fit a phone. Then they had the re revised version where they increased the size a little bit. So the new version that we see today is the increased size so you can actually fit a phone a little bit more, just, just a little bit larger, which I like. I, I personally like it. It's just that the price, wow, that's a lot. No. It's a lot. But phone sizes always change too, right? So unless you go for the small size phone, the Pro instead of the Max, it still could be a problem. Because I'm a Max phone user, so. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right, from Viv. Will you buy expensive bags which are not leather? Example, the Chanel Denim Pearl Crush. 
if I can get the pearl crush bag in denim, the one that's coming out, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really pretty, isn't it? It there is. was another denim that came out that I really liked, but I was way too late on the game. It was like, um, it looked like the 19, but squishy, like denim. Mm, yes, yes. You know what I'm talking about? It was like a, it came out in like a green color, I remember. Like it's a almost green. like a tie-dye version, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, I really liked that bag. Um, that was cute. I actually yeah. had the opportunity to buy that one, but I, I just passed on it. Um, I would, I would buy an expensive bag that is not leather if I really liked it enough. Uh, Chanel denim is probably at the top of the list. The one season that I really liked is the one with like very, um, uh, like the CCs, it has CC patterns on it and it's like white and it's sort of almost like hand-drawn CCs on mm -hmm. it. That one's cute. I know which Oh, and I also like the one that um, Michelle showed us. Her bag. Oh, but that's not denim. But um, her bag was very nice too. Oh, it's like tweed. Was it not? It's not tweed. It was some kind of material. It's, isn't just like fab. It's like a kind of like a tougher fabric, right? I think and it I had would. that. Yeah. Nice would I buy uh, wavy. Bag? I don't know what that pattern is called, but it's the floor. <laughs> the the floor in uh, which country Spain. was it? Spain. She said Spain. Yeah. I think I would buy a bag that is not leather, but I will have to pick very carefully. Like it won't, cannot be white, cannot buy a tweed mm. bag in white, just because the weather here does is not friendly to non... Uh, leather bags don't hold up as well because humidity here is really high. However, with material like tweed, cloth, they just... I don't know, they get weird spots. <laughs> like white, yellow spots. So probably denim would be the only material that I would buy in a bag. Nylon. Mm. Satin. Yeah, that kind of thing. That should be okay. Sparkles. Sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Stella? Would you? Yes. Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't see any reason why not. Let's be realistic. They don't actually, it's not worth that much just because it's, it's leather. Really. Yes. That's not, there's plenty of leather bags that don't cost £4,000. That's true. <laughs> it's not the um, material. Maybe it's just the, the, the wear and tear, right? Because with material... But I don't we know. Don't... I think with leather, it's just, maybe wear and tear is a bit better. I, maybe. Um, I think it depends on the design because even like the Coco Crush, no, what's it called? The Coco. What's the yeah, one? The Pearl Crush. Yeah, not oh, the Pearl Crush. The Coco handle. Oh, the Coco handle. Okay. So that's got very sharp corners, hasn't it? And mm -hmm. it, even though it's leather, that can really have a lot of wear and tear depending on how you use it. So I think it's the design. A combination of probably the design and the fabric um but because i mean we have more than one bag the rotation i don't think there would be that much wear and tear realistically true just means that you cannot have more than you cannot have less than one bag you need more <laughs> <laughs> however with the coco handle unless you uh, only wear that bag all the time because it does have a top handle, because I mainly wear it by the top handle, um, my corners are fine. Mm. I never have any issues with it. Mind you, if it was a bigger size, maybe it's easier to get those corner wears too. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the. I think this is denim bag. So VJ has it. I had oh. that bag, Amy. Got it in the mini oh. square. Oh, oh my that's gosh. the perfect combo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that one's good. Really yes, nice. the denim from 20C. Ah, mm. uh, I missed out on that. It was so like it came out and it was gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Usually those are the first to go for sure. Denim, yeah. yeah. Denim with Chanel. You see denim, you get the denim because it's it comes <laughs> it comes so rare. It's so rare. And they always have denim, don't they? They always bring something. 
but they it, they don't repeat it. Like it's just like colors, right? Because they they do a denim, but it's always something different. So they did the the denim wash maybe about three seasons ago, then it totally gone. Yeah. And then they did this denim, and it won't come back for ever. So the denim, they don't really repeat the denim uh, patterns and colors. Yeah. But and especially when they do it in... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just saying I don't have any denim bags any from any designer, I don't think. Never have, I don't think. I think I find it hard with denim because I wear a lot of denim and then I feel like there's... It looks funny when you wear denim trousers like jeans with a denim bag i don't know mm -hmm. it's, it's no i agree actually yeah. denim a, a denim bag is probably harder to style than your typical leather bag even in any color actually yeah but having said that it's you still want one <laughs> it's probably better uh probably easier to style in in the summer i would say um personally i would feel yeah and also, uh, when they do make that denim bag in a coveted style, such as a mini, they always are, they become elusive. They, they are always gone before the launch is even mm. there yet. Um, I think the only time, like I said, I was able to, I would have been able to buy one of the denim bag is the one that you mentioned, because that's not like their typical classic styles and, mm. um, I was offered one, but at the time I was just like, oh, I didn't really like it. And that one also is sort of like an acquired taste. You only like it after a, after seeing it for a while. And then you're like, oh, actually, it's pretty nice. But th by that yeah, time, it was too late already. Too late. No yeah. time to think with Chanel. No. Buy it now. <laughs> yeah. Never. Never could have. There's no time ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, this yes is a good no. question. Because Denim came out in uh, with um, LV. So what are your thoughts? from Lux, Love Lux Paris. What are your thoughts on the LV Pink Denim Collection? So I saw a few Instagram photos from Foxy LV. She posted, I think it was maybe yesterday or last night. No, sorry. Yesterday and last night, same thing. <laughs> was it today or yesterday? Um, and there was this pink denim. Ooh. Mini pochette. pochette. Yeah. Oh, it's not really focusing, but you guys can look it up. Foxy LV. Foxy LV, yep. Look it up, look it up. Oh, it's sort of focusing. Yeah, focusing. I, I it, it reminds me of the Marc Jacobs. It's cute. Yeah, it's cute. yeah no, it's cute. I like the actual denim colored one. I probably wouldn't go for a pink. Like the blue denim. Mm. Right. Yes. Yeah. yes. Go grab it. So what, are they coming out in bags with this print? No idea. I, I didn't even know mm -hmm. they were having this collection. Okay. No, I didn't. Very it nice. says December 31st. For, I, I guess for the USA at least. Okay. So she's based in the US. I like it. I saw that and I was like, oh, okay, gonna be another one of those. See, I uh, like to... that denim color because it's darker. I feel like darker is easier to to match with things rather than the lighter denim. True, true. Yeah, no, I like that. I'm gonna have a little look in, into that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you made a promise that this year you won't spend, so you can cross a day. 31st, right? Was it 31st? December? <laughs> It says uh, on her post, it says it's the 31st of December, but I don't know if it's worldwide okay. or if it's just USA. I'm still looking every day for the Speedy 20 online. I'm never going to get it. Oh. But today I have a little look <laughs> just in case. Just try it on I, if it's available. I stock, like, I take a look at LV app every few days just to see what's going, what's going on. But yeah, nothing. Uh, what has piqued my interest is actually the cousin bag. Really? Uh, yeah, I I think the yeah, more that surprised I me it, too. Sorry? That really surprised me as well. Yeah, I don't like when it first came out, I thought it was the ugliest thing ever. But <laughs> <laughs> I have been seeing more and more people style it. And 
the color. Oh my gosh. Which color do you like? Yeah, the green. The green came out. It was mm. gorgeous. Oh my gosh. See, I liked it when it came out, but then I saw the price. I was like, no oh, way. Yeah. Are you Turned saying that price. that price? So I was like, the price was is too there. much. It's so, so high. Yeah. So which, which is one it? is it that you like? How much is it? Okay, let me look. I like the Cousin BB, not this color, like this one. It's in, yeah, there we go. Oh, the it's BB. In. Okay. So it's 4,800. Nearly okay. 5,000 Singapore dollars. Save it by the Chanel 19. I know, totally would. But yeah, it's growing on me. Two, two and a half. It's, it's just really it's just cute, LB's actually. version of their pillow bag. That's exactly what it means. It's a cushion. Mm. <laughs> oh, is that what? I probably sound really thick by saying that, but is that what that means? Yeah. Okay. That's what it means. <laughs> cushion, cushion, cushion. Yeah, it's the cute. The baby's very yeah. cute. It's available. More I, I think that's the thing. Uh, whenever they any brands make a BB or micro whatever version, it always gets you, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Once it shrunk a little bit, oh my gosh, it's like, <gasps> so the green, the green got me. Wait, let me see. Oh, I see why oh, that's now. That's a nice green. That's a nice green, right? I was like, mm, that's a nice green. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Oh, it is a nice green. It's like a jewelry green. Yeah. What it do y'all nice think? Green. What does the audience think of the green? <laughs> but I won't buy it, okay? I'm just like, wow, nice. And by the way, the green is more expensive. It's five thousand four hundred. Oh. Yeah, it is. Why? Why? Because it's a runway color. Do you know what I would worry about with this bag? You know how all of the hardware on Louis Vuitton bags go that funny color, the brass. Yes. There's so much on here, like with that gold, the the gold bit, all of that. I would really worry that after like a while, that's gonna go funny. Only because I just from previous experience, but I do really like that color. Yes, yes. I I I have to agree. I like minimal hardware on LV bags. Mm. I I prefer. I like their canvas for sure, but that is why the Neverfull is perfect. Minimal hardware, little D ring here, little D ring there. That's fine, but yeah. not too many. Yeah, yeah. So Jesse, we were just talking about the cousin, and oh my gosh, yes, I love the little belt bag. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's too expensive. I think they. It, I mean, yeah, yeah. The hardware is really great and all, but honestly. The bag is not like revolutionary. It's just three pouches strung together. And for that belt bag, because the belt bag is cute, but it's nearly $3,000. Yeah. No. That's both of their colors, there's a pinky color and a green color online, and they're both available. I'm quite surprised. Maybe I should check the Speedy 20. Can you imagine if it's available now? <laughs> So this everyone is the checking their bag. The, money now. The, the belt so bag version. Oh, that's the belt bag. Okay. That's cute. It's super cute. It comes with a little, yeah, but $3,000? No, don't do it. But how much is the Chanel one? It's more. <laughs> the but it's Chanel, though. <laughs> the Chanel version is a little bit, well, now it's more, but it was cheaper, Now it's more. Right? Yeah, you got it when it was cheaper, yeah. When they I got the Chanel crazy. top handle, it was 2006. This is more expensive. Yeah, yeah this, is border, this is borderline. Like this is this is just at that three thousand dollar mark that I'm. If it came out in green, I might say, "Oh my god, I might do it." But not in pink. Nope. <laughs> but Jesse, Jesse likes pink. You oh have yeah, to look at it likes from pink. her perspective too, right? Oh, oh, you don't have to, but. I mean, Jesse's collection is pretty, like, it's very colorful. And she lives True. in Australia, which 
calls for any like calls for color bags basically like i live in vancouver it's rainy all the time so most of my bags are dark color um but if i lived in australia or hawaii oh my gosh i would have a collection of different colors yeah i didn't know about this belt bag it's nice i'm waiting for somebody to unbox it <laughs> there is one bag that i am eyeing okay but i will not I will not, I will not, I will hold myself down until it's all sold out. <laughs> what, what is it? From LV? No. What brand? Balenciaga. Oh. Balenciaga. You keep surprising me today. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> no. Fine, back next. You got Chanel. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll, I'll tell it since we're almost at the end of the uh, live stream. So I have been eyeing, no, not eyeing. I have been stalking the Gucci. What is it? Hack. The, the hack thing, the hack thing, right? Because I, I actually like that bag, the hourglass bag. Okay. And it's nice. The hack, the, the like, I don't know, the bag that looks like this, right? And then while I was looking at it, I was like, oh my gosh. They have the Balenciaga bag, but Gucci style. <laughs> so you're talking about the one with all the monogram all over it yeah the the city bag let me look oh the up. city not the hourglass no i mean i like the hourglass but apparently you cannot get it anymore because that was one of the few bags that were totally sold out so i actually really like this so, okay cat so you you like it but you're gonna wait until it's sold out so you can't buy it so yeah exactly because I don't want to buy it. I refuse to buy Gucci. <laughs> Does it come in a BB size? <laughs> yeah, you know, if they came in a B smaller size, oh my gosh. Dang you, Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> I have always liked this bag. Like, this is this is one of my favorite bags. The, the Balenciaga motorcycle bag. But they discontinued this. Hmm. They have revamped the whole um, city bag line. I almost bought it, I think, last year when Mel in Melbourne had a promotion. Uh, not a promotion. Like, she was... There was some... I can't remember now. And they were having... She had a discount code. And I almost bought it. Then I held back for a day and it was sold out. <laughs> oh. I was like, okay, forget it. Forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. But not meant to be. And now it's back. It's staring at me. In Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so expensive it's like five thousand dollars oh wow because it's the collaboration let me count it's three thousand us two thousand nine hundred usd so i can't I imagine you wearing a gucci i, don't <laughs> I can't I know. but you know cat i feel like if you wait Usually the, the reason that you wait is because you, do, you don't even love it enough. Otherwise, you would have bought it already. Yeah. That's how I do it. Like, if I love something enough, I would have even, I, I wouldn't even ask anybody. I would just buy it. Because if you loved it enough, you wouldn't have waited that one day. I, think. I would. You would? <laughs> I would. But what's the difference of waiting one day? It's the same discount. No, no, I, I will wait it out. I'll wait it out. I'll force myself to sit on it. Okay. What so for? That... <laughs> yeah, what, what, what for? <laughs> okay. Um, why do I do that? Because then I know it's not impulse. Because I don't know if I love it enough and it's impulse. Like, uh, okay. Like, love <laughs> you and lose impulsive it. love. If you know your name. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So I always have like, okay, fine. If I love it enough, it'll still be hanging around. And then by the time I really make up my mind, it's still there. If it's not there, then it's fine. It's not meant to be. Not meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's another way of thinking about it. And um, it's funny because I, I do agree with that. A friend once told me, she said, if the item that she bought sells out, it means that it was a good decision because it was so popular. that <laughs> It's good that she also bought it. So in a way... <laughs> uh 
in a way it, it it's counterintuitive because you're in your case right it, it's it did sell out and you don't have it. But, but i got a lot of bags i can live yeah, without it <laughs> so does everyone <laughs> okay it depends i think you no know, I, I agree with you it's like i have to love it like and i really love it but what's holding me back it is dang it's gucci i'm sorry mm. gucci it's just that it's you don't love it enough then. Yeah. We'll see, yeah. we'll see. Anyway, it's not even on sale yet. So it's on sale in the States, but it's oh, not, okay. it's not it's available not in Singapore yet. Oh, uh, really? Not in Malaysia. Mm. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I think they're all sold out here. We're slow. So we might still be able to get like the stuff. Oh, but it'll be so little here, like maybe one piece. <laughs> Maybe wait for the, they'll probably bring the city bag back, I think. If they've done this, I think they might bring it back. So maybe just wait for that. True. True. They might, it might maybe it'll do so well that they might shrink it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't mind then buy that. Though. They did bring out a new version, didn't they? And yeah, they have yeah. shrunk that. You don't like that one? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay, enough about the bag. <laughs> it's giving me FOMO. <laughs> There's one more question from Diana. Yeah. Would you buy the Hermes Mini Bolide or the LV Mini Mini Alma? Oh, is yeah. is that the one with the chain? Like the chain and strap? Oh my gosh. Is I there a Mini one. Alma? There was always one, no? What? Really? Maybe it's called Nano then. Let me see if the Mini Alma is different. Mini Alma. Okay. Would you buy a Mini Bolide? The answer is... St stick with the Alma. <laughs> I agree. The Bolide is great. It's a great little bag, but it's really expensive. You can get the same look. Um... And get the same look as the bolide, but the bolide, it's nice, but yeah, it's very expensive. I can't find it. It must be she, unless you mean the Alma BB, because yeah, I, mean, I knew Alma there BB. was a nano Alma and it had like a part of it, you know, the strap, a part of it is chain. That's oh. from a while ago. I, I don't know if they still sell it, I can't find it on the Canadian website. What do you think, Stella? Have you seen the mini bolide? Yes. I'm not really a fan. I prefer the Alma. I did own an Alma BB in Verney years ago. Um, it's a good bag. I keep. I do sometimes look at bringing it back into the family, but not yet. But, yeah, no, I do like the Alma. The BB version. The other one's just too big and bulky. Yeah, same, same. Yeah, so she's talking about the BB. Yeah, mm -hmm. so BB, I'm gonna, I think they're too similar. Um, you got to really love Hermes to get the mini bolide. But... What came out first? I don't know. Doesn't matter though. I'm just wondering if Hermes... Because it, it's very similar. Balenciaga mm -hmm. have done a really similar shape as well. Oh, yeah, huh? yeah. They just copied... Balenciaga just copied one of them. No, but the LV Mini, uh, the LV Alma BB is still better, I feel. I just like that it's structured. No matter which mm -hmm. material you go for, it's more structured. I think that is the point of this bag style, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, the Bolide, I don't know if it's... I mean, the, I think in the smallest size, it's cute if it's a pop of color. But aside from that, uh, like Kat said, unless you're a diehard fan of the brand, I, I think design-wise and just like the, the aesthetic, I would just go with Speak LV with and you save a ton of money too. Hmm. Bolide True. was first. VJ Bolide says. was first. Yeah. You know, the mini Bolide. Okay. So this is me being like thinking forward, sort of like, what if you need to resell your bag, right? So with the Alma, because it's structured, you can get, pretty much okay back for it you know it even though it's it will um even though it will you may lose a little bit right i don't know maybe a little bit
but overall because it's not such a high price item you wouldn't you would you might, either you can get the cost or maybe you could buy maybe make a bit because it's it's going up in price but the mini bolide because it is made with either swift ever color or that kind of like soft material when you first get it, it's amazing. It's so cute and all, but over time it actually slouches. It sinks. And the and you've seen like the bully, the big bully, right? It looks great like this, but over time it actually sinks like a puddle. <laughs> and the resale value for bully bags are terrible. They're like yeah. <laughs> so bad. Half the price. So I don't know how the mini bully will hold out over time. Maybe better than the large sizes, but the price is so expensive. I think it's going for, um, I think almost eight thousand Singapore dollars, seven something. Wow. Okay. No. No. <laughs> no. There is one Hermes bag that I have seen recently that I like. I don't know what it's called. The one that it has two handles. I can't get with this camera. I'm like this. I'm like, where, where do I? <laughs> <laughs> it's got You're two right. handles um and it looks like there's a zip in the middle two handles and a zip in the middle <laughs> <laughs> what shape is it <laughs> tell i'm not into <laughs> um, i don't know how to explain it it looks like the two handles they come together like that no am i thinking of something else <laughs> No, who was the guy that was on your show a few weeks ago? He Lindy, had is it the Lindy? Maybe. I don't <laughs> know. It's like um it looks like a dumpling. Like a yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> is yeah, that it's Lindy, cool? Lindy. Oh my god, Lindy. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. The the dumpling. Yes. Yeah, buy that the really Lindy nice. instead of buying the buy the mini book. Sorry, my the mini Lindy instead of buying the bully. That is how easy is it person. to get one of those? Do I have to play this game or can I just walk in? I, I think, I think it's, it's not as easy if you like the mini size. If you go for the size up or any size larger, then it's probably easier. Okay. Yeah. I can't yeah. play the, the game. I just can't do it. <laughs> or just well, you're a VIP now, now because you went to the sales. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure until know. you try. <laughs> oh, no, I just couldn't. The the stress, I just couldn't do it. Oh no, no. What I mean is like just to browse, like to just to go into the store and ask about availability. If they say yeah. no, then it's no. But if they happen to be able to sell you one, why not? Right? You never know. I might try. Yeah. Good. All right then. Anyway, we are at the two hour mark. It was fun, Stella. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so, for having me, guys. Thank you so much. We definitely will have to bring you back in when you get your Lindy. <laughs> oh, your Birkin. You try no. it out. <laughs> That's going to happen. <laughs> All right, everybody. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for the questions. Uh, remember, tomorrow at 1.30 Singapore time or Malaysia time, we have the members live and that's going to be a special one for all the members you can check our community post as well um for the topic it's called selling everything <laughs> <laughs> we'll be watching right. yeah it's gonna be fun all right guys thank you bye, thank you. bye. bye.